Oh yeah, I'm recording. Good, 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 good. Hey, um, real quick, I wanted to do a video. Um, I think I'm going to do... I'll break this up. But um, I just got my big giant 100-pack uh, of 2 mil um, paperback polypropylene bags. And I'm going to um, clean some of these books off with my little kit here. And you're like, what's in the kit? What's in the kit? Okay. So I got all this stuff at Dollar Tree. Okay. So in the kit, we have some furniture polish to kind of clean up some of the book covers that have a glossy finish. So there's that. I have some little microfiber wash rags that I'm going to need right now. Um, we got a toothbrush to brush some pages up. Um, oh, and this is my the eyeglass repair kit that will be used with the glue sticks. And then I have a thing of erasers here. So what I'm going to do real quick, just so I don't have to do this later is um, just take out one thing that I need of each because <sighs> I don't need a four pack of glue sticks in here and if stuff is wrecked that I need to fix I'll show you how I'm going to do that uh, damn it, how am I going to get into this? Oh, that worked. The paper ripped right off. That's how you get into these things. You just force your way in like a madman. And that's good. Okay, so I have that. I have this. What else do I need? I'm not going to use the furniture polish today. I'm just trying to get the dust off. So let me get one of these rags in case I need one of them. Boom. All right. So now this is a lot more. Um, actually, it closed better when it was full of stuff. But anyhow, so the first thing I'm going to do is dust some of these because they are dusty. So I got this beautiful kitten with a whip. One of you sent this to me. I can't remember offhand who. I want to say, but I don't want to say in case I'm wrong. But I super appreciate this. So we're just going to go like that. Soft bristle, bristle brush. So, um, I was going to do like a full on. Oh, I almost spilled that. I was going to do a full on um, thing for you here and do all my books, but that would take a very long time. So, I just picked some of the ones that were nearby. This drop her in. Oh, that is what we call a fit. Okay, so that's perfect. I'm very happy about that. Okay, so next we have this Creatures of the Abyss. Edited by Murray Langster, or is this just his book? Might just be his book. Yeah, this is just his book. Okay. I thought this was a collection for some reason. Oops. Very dirty. So, anyway, just gently. Brush that shit away. 
Oh, that's some cool artwork. I don't know, Berkeley, I think, is put that out. <sighs> now, these work really good for these little paperbacks. I don't know how well they're going to work with the Ace paperbacks. And I have a bigger one, because I wanted to do this also with, like, my paperbacks from hell. But those are really fat, and I don't know if they're going to fit in these correctly. Oh, this one's filthy. Not filthy, just very, very dusty. If I drop this effing rag one more time. This is Monsters and Such. Murray Leinster. Leinster. Oh, this book is kind of falling apart. That's not good. You can see that. Yeah, it's not great. Look at that. That's pretty cool. Things. Ooh, look. It comes with a fantastic offer. That's probably what's fucked the goddamn binding of this thing up. Having that big chunker in there. So, I'm curious, who of you uses bags? Because I've always been very strongly against it until my allergies started making me feel, so this one fits, that's okay, and since my allergies started to make me feel like I was dying, oh man, just touching these books when they're this dirty, and they're dirty from being in storage and or being in the desert. Flying saucers are real. This is gold medal book number 107. Is that right, 107? This was one of the first um, numbered gold medal books because the first few were um, <clears throat> just testing the market. And I don't even think they said gold medal on them. They just said faucet. Is this going to tell me? Yeah, the best from true, what today's woman should know about marriage and sex. We are the public enemies. Man story. The Persian cat. I'll find you. By Richard Himmel. New to meet by Sax Romer. Stretch Dawson by W.R. Burnett. And Flying Saucers Are Real by Donald Kehoe. Um... And then also Wade Miller, who did uh, Kitten with a Whip, Devil May Care. So those were the first gold medal books. So that's kind of cool. This is filthy, but I think that's stained. When you get books, I got this at a, like a paperback trade show long... Ooh! That was some fucking gunk. Oh my gosh, look at this fucking toothbrush already. That was a brand new toothbrush. You saw me open that. These books are filthy. I got a vacuum in here now, too. So anyway. But yeah, who uses book? Or who uses bags? And you want to hear something funny? I have always been... Like, 90% of the time. Adamantly against bagging comic books. And I don't think you need to bag comic books anymore when they're not being printed on newsprint. 
but even like back in the day, like my newsprint comics, like I was always against it. Um, because, uh, I'm like, well, how the hell am I going to read it if it's in a bag? And I've always felt the same way about books, too. How the hell am I going to read these books if they're in bags? But a lot of these books I get, they're in such either perfect condition, and they're super old and I don't want to fuck with them, or they're like this. Like someone used athletic tape to fix this, The Shrinking Man, um, by Richard Matasan. Um, that I don't want to fuck with it. So I'll usually, if I find a book like this and I want to read it, I'll get it, but then I'll go buy, um, like a newer copy of it. And if I can't find a newer copy of it, um, the ebook market, look at how fucked that is, man. That's going to take a lot of fixing. But the ebook market on older stuff is better than it's ever been. And I don't just mean because of how many years have gone by. Um, there's just so many reprint houses putting out... Oh, this page is not attached. Okay. So, keep in mind page 98. Um, there's just so many, like on Amazon even, like so many great reprint houses doing ebooks of a lot of this stuff. So, um, if I can't find a paperback copy, I'll do that. But this is kind of relaxing. Probably be more relaxing if I wasn't fucking talking. So, The Shrinking Man. Look at that cover. And here we have The Chinese Keyhole by Richard Himmel. Um, one thing I wanted to do when I was doing this was to do, like, series books. Like, I was going to do all my Burroughs, all my uh, Conan, all my... Um, that's a cool back cover. Um, all my Gore books. And I'm hanging those up because I just love the artwork, the um, Boris Vallejo artwork on those. It's just sick. The books are absolute shit, and I could not get into it. I wanted to so bad because it's a big series, and it has beautiful artwork, but those are just being collected for Boris. The Avenger by Matthew Blood. Not 100%, but I think this is also Richard Hemmel. Matthew Blood is a... Um, pseudonym. Is it Richard Hemmel? Might be Richard Hemmel. I can't remember. Oh, no. It starts with a D. Not Donald Westlake. Um, Brett Holiday, I think. Holiday. I'm probably making shit up now. You guys are like, yeah, every name you just said is the same person. I don't think you're right, but you never know. So anyway, so I just grabbed a bunch of my gold medal books that were pretty close. And um, some other stuff to show off. To show off, yo. Yeah. And back when a book was 35 cents. For my time. And this one, I'm kind of bummed out about because I wanted to do this with all of my Fu Manchu books. Because I think I have all of them, but I don't have all of them in the same set. These books are also... Um, they have diminishing returns for me. At least, like, once you read the first one... And actually, the second one, too, is kind of interesting. But it just becomes, like, this the same thing that happens every time. Come on. 
That's weird. Now, a lot of the care I have learned to take care of my books, I learned from Jules Burt on YouTube. He has an amazing collection. And whenever he gets new shit, he goes into like a total cleaning spree. And he's like way more hardcore than I am. He's like a vintage paperback surgeon, is what I would call him. Or even like a plastic surgeon. Yeah, these books are, um, they, they did not age well as far as um, political correctness goes. But they're fun. They're good times. I have Gloria Kirby, in case you were wondering. It's a nice, thin little book. But man, like the spine is all not centered and shit. The fuck is that? I used to, whenever I saw like the gold medal seal, I would pick the book up. And a lot of times I would end up just at like some random bookstore and I would pick it up. And, um, get home and realize that that was like the third copy of the same book I got, I would just get so excited when I would see the seal. Because that seal means this is an original book, okay? It's never been printed anywhere else. Ooh, Gulliver of Mars. Now this, I think, is the same size as the other Ace books. There's going to be a lot of dust in this, because I had this in the desert. Oh! Oh, you guys can't see that. I'm holding it too low. Let's see. No, that was mainly on top. I love this book. It is just... It's perfect. This is pre um, Edgar Rice Burroughs. Um, this is like the proto planetary romance book. In case any of you nerds out there wanted to know. Okay. So the Ace books fit. I don't think. I think my other Ace books will fit. This one's kind of a thicker one, so we'll see how this goes. This one I'm putting in a bag. I don't like these photo covers. They're crap. Um, and this is a later printing of this stuff from the Lancer Books. But um, it's one of the few... Oh, dude, that is filthy. It's one of the few um, Day Keen books I have, like paperbacks, originals. Bit of, bit of dust in there. And this one's kind of falling apart too. It's funny because I think um, one of these books was better than the other. And it's probably the second one because the book is like split in the binding. And I could fix that with my glue stick and my eyeglass repair kit. Um, but anyway. So let's see how this fits because it's kind of big. Oh, this is going to be... Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit the next one in one of these. Like, do you know, if, if any of you do bags, like, for the big fat, 
like um, 80s paperbacks. What size bag do you have to get for those? So yeah. So we have, oh! We have, um, who has Wilma Lathrop and Murder on the Sad. Uh-oh. Okay. So this is the one that I'm actually worried about. The Great Shark Hunt. I don't think this is going to fit in these bags. But if it does, then my horror books will fit in these bags. But I think this is going to be kind of like me putting on a con. What? What did you say? You foul pig. Yeah. Um, yeah, when I got these on Amazon, there was one reviewer who was like, these bags suck, don't get them, they didn't fit my books. And I think he was doing big paperback from hell type books. Are we glad that we could call those books that? Like, is that something we're happy with? Or should we just go back to calling them 80s horror paperbacks? Because that's like calling a soda a Coke or a tissue a Kleenex or some lip balm some chapstick. I don't think this is going to fit. Yeah, so what size bag do I need to get for these big fat books? Unless you're like, yeah, they fit, you're just an idiot. Tell me that too, because then I'll just keep trying. But because these bags are see-through, it's like trying to shove Wonder Woman into her invisible jet when you can't see it. Oh, oh, are we, are we in? Another thing I say when I'm... Yeah, this isn't going to work. Okay, so, um, big fat books don't fit in these bags. So moving right along. Slapstick. I love that cover so much. This might have been the first... Vonnegut book I read after um, Breakfast of Champions. I got these next few I want to show you from my dad, except that one. It's that one I got from Book Baron, which was my favorite, favorite um, used bookstore in the fucking world. So now you have retired. You are now going to hang on my wall and look at me every day. So yeah, this edition of Cat's Cradle. I got it. Book Baron. For $1.25. Used to be able to fill um, big brown uh, grocery bags. Oh my gosh, that is gross. Cat's Cradle. Weird artwork. Hey, I'm going to drop a bunch of shit on my computer. Um, so let's see. What do we have going on here? Hmm. Ah. Sirens of Titan is a really fun one, too. And, um... It's awesome, because Kazakh the dog from Sirens of Titan... This feels really heavy, and it shouldn't. This feels extremely heavy. I don't know if they use different paper, or thicker paper to make the book seem as long as all the other ones. This book feels fucking heavy. But yeah, so Kazakh the dog from Sirens the Titan makes a guest appearance in Breakfast of Champions, and it's hysterical. 
<sighs> and apparently, I can't remember where I read this or heard it, but I remember talking about it when we did Breakfast of Champions. That, um, or maybe it's in the book, he's talking about it. I think he was talking about it, but Kazakh was supposed to be a much bigger part of um, Breakfast of Champions, and it just didn't shake out that way. This is Dusty. So, for those of you who hadn't heard the story yet, when I emptied my storage unit, um, oh, dude, this is gonna be, oh, fuck. When I emptied the storage unit, um, I went and checked it out, and all of my stuff was covered with like a half inch of concrete dust because the um, place next door is a concrete place and they have like just mounds, huge mounds of concrete powder and they don't wet it down because it's concrete. So if the wind blows, um, all that shit just blows right through the doors, through the vents in the ceiling and just like coats all your shit. Oh, so the last one I'm going to do here is this copy of Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. We've got some Ralph Steadman artwork in here, which is awesome. I want all these framed, especially that one where he's puking in the toilet naked and the maid comes in. Uh, good stuff. Um, I think we're going to be doing a buddy read of this in... September, quite possibly. So, if you've ever wanted to read Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, that's when it's happening. <coughs> Alright, so that was me cleaning off paperbacks and then putting them into bags. But yeah, let me know about fat books. I gotta figure that out. And soon these will all be hanging up all over the room. And um, if you enjoyed this, let me know down below because I'm gonna do more based on um, authors and series books and stuff like that. So I'll see you later. Bye bye.